wonderful. We can get started. This is Abe Friedtanzer from Awards Radar, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with Danae Benton about the Gilded Age. How are you, Danae? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. It's nice to be able to speak with you again. I was re-watching our interview with Louisa from before the show started. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That crazy press day. So how do you feel now? How do you think that uh, people have received the show? I mean, I, I was saying earlier today that the most that I get stopped on the street is by Black people who love the show. And that was like my biggest dream with the opportunity we had with Peggy. And so obviously at the time that we met, Louisa and I were like, we hope people like the show. And now it's like, oh my God, people love the show. And we got to be a part of the reason people love it. And that's really special. That's wonderful. I like the fact that Peggy, you know, has these two worlds that she lives in. I think more than any other character, she sort of has her own separate plot lines. I think everything else sort of like somehow pertains back to the, you know, all the money stuff and everything, but getting to see her journalistic career and her, you know, the way that she gets to, to see the big uh, Edison display is just very, very cool. Yeah, it's pretty special. Would you consider yourself a history buff? And are you excited to see real moments like that incorporated into the show? I do love history. I think it's one of our biggest political tools is telling people the truth about what's happened and the context of what's happened. And um, I think that the way erasure plays into the way that we as a mass society learn the US history is a really big part of a lot of the problems we have. And so it really collides with my personal interests in threading the needle and putting the puzzle pieces together of how things are the way that they are. And I think that Peggy's world is a really uh, important missing piece in that narrative. And so it's, it, it like really thrills me to no end. Have there been any moments in history that you learned about through this show, even if it's not entirely based on real life? Yeah, I mean, the entire Black Gotham period. I mean, Julian talks about not knowing about this Black elite population in New York and the history of Black pharmacists and the schools and the churches and society. And um, for me, it was also a revelation. Obviously, it's like I always had an awareness that Black people on every level of society have existed for all time. But to have the specific detail and names and cross streets and businesses, it, it's thrilling. I also think that it really, um, you know, Peggy's identity presents itself in a very interesting manner when she's with Marion in those particular two moments I'm thinking of, one with the unfortunate incident with the shoes that she brings, um, and then in a sort of subtler time where she tells her not to hail a cab and then just make a big deal about it rather to let Peggy be the one to, uh, to, to raise her hand and to hail it. Yeah, sorry, what was the question? So I just, I think... Uh, what do you, I don't, I didn't just ask a question. Um, you know, how do you feel playing those scenes? Do those uh, feel very poignant? Mm. Yeah, they felt really important to me. It was something that Louisa and I talked a lot about, about how do we make this relationship between them authentic and not just this, um, a trope of a white hero or like this kumbaya relationship where no one sees color. I'm like, that um, feels like a missed opportunity because every relationship that I have with a white person in my life now has gone through um, has gone through what does it look like to really build trust and what happens when you screw up and are you capable of realizing it and how do we grow past that fracture um, felt like something we really advocated to be a part of their story so that when they did build the trust we could really honor their friendship and that intimacy that they had to work for and that Marion had to grow for. And we had to see whether or not Peggy would trust her, you know? Yeah, and I think that Peggy also does seem a little bit more aware of what's going on, even just with, you know, Marion's romantic relationship. She's a little less starry eyed and uh, sort of has learned more about the world and who not to trust and, uh, you know, just to be sort of attentive to that. Which is yeah, we learned by the end of the season how much Peggy's really gone through and how seasoned of a woman she actually is. Um, and I think it makes you respect her even more. I was talking to Karen Morgan recently about the idea that, especially on, I know on Downton Abbey also, but especially on the Gilded Age, that there are often these big scandals and secrets that people are hiding. And when it comes out, it's really not anything that is so significant, especially in today's area, today's era. But I think that with, with Peggy, it's the kind of thing that really 
could have changed the entire course of her life. Yeah, a thousand percent. I thought it was really interesting to see Peg, um, Arthur and Dorothy cope with what it would cost for their Black daughter's life to be thrown off course from what they imagined and from what they worked towards for her. And I just think that the stakes are higher. And to get to see that kind of interior life of their family navigating that was um, really powerful to me. I also really like the relationship um, that Peggy has with Agnes because she's somebody who really doesn't like anybody, but seems to sort of like her. And I think she does embody that perspective of, you know, any sort of activism is political and bad and not necessary, but there's still this strange sort of trust and respect there. Yeah, I think that Agnes respects people who make the best of the cards they've been dealt. And I think that Agnes surprises herself with the way she's intrigued by Peggy. And some of that is certainly internalized racism of like, oh my God, you can read, you can write, you know, <laughs> and the, which is something that I experience in white spaces to this day, you know. And I do think that um, Agnes senses some sort of a kindred iron strength that Agnes has had to have to get through her life as a woman that she sees that Peggy also has. And it's not a naive strength. It's a strength that you won and you understand the tightrope that you're walking. And I think that they are able to see that in each other. Like it's one thing to have big dreams, but do you understand the cost of them? And I don't think there's any doubt that Peggy understands that. Is there anything that surprised you about Peggy's journey that you didn't expect when you first started the show? You know, it was such a big uh, collaborative process getting to what we see on screen from Peggy, um, that it was more like excited about the worlds that when I signed on to the show, that I hoped that we would be able to get the show to discover. Um, you know, like originally, we weren't going to have a Black press. And in Dr. Dunbar's part, point of view and my sort of desire to have us get deeper into the Black world of the show, gave us the opportunity to tell stories like T. Thomas Fortune. And I got to be a part of feeling that excitement. Like, yes, yes, yes. Like, let's dig deeper there. Um, and so season two, because we're already set up with that infrastructure of our creative team now, I'm able to just sort of ride the journey and see the worlds that, that get to be revealed to me as well. I wouldn't ask you about any plot points from season two, but tonally or thematically, is there anything that you can preview, especially about Peggy? Yeah, we get to really see Peggy develop more of her political voice. We get to see her get exposed to new worlds and pique her interest and find uh, more hunger. And we get to get introduced to some um, really important Black historical figures from that time, you know, like T. Thomas Fortune, or, you know, obviously we have the Astors and we have Stanford White and we have these different people and, and some of the... Um, major Black voices at that time get to come into the show too, which is exciting. And when we last spoke, you talked about how you'd love to be in the Russell house for some reason, but there just wouldn't be any, you know, thing is, are we going to get to see Peggy more aligned with some of the other supporting characters of the show, or she's sort of still off on her own, uh, her own journey? You know, I haven't gotten all of the scripts from the season yet, but it, there is a very cool way that the worlds uh, start to collide that I'm, that I'm excited to, to show. Is this a show that you think could run for many, many seasons, or do you think there's sort of a finite endpoint coming soon? I think we all hope that we get many seasons and that you all keep watching and loving it. Uh, what's cool about shows with such this large ensemble and the way that Julian writes these characters and Sonia writes these characters is you, you feel like you always want to know more about them and find out about their backstory and who they're going to relate to. So I, I think the world is really our oyster if, if we get the chance to keep going. I agree. And is there anything else you're working on right now that you'd love to share? No, Gilded is, is, is uh, I'm really loving this role and I'm excited to see what comes out of it too. That's great. I spoke to Julian before and he mentioned that they were very lucky that all these, you know, Broadway actors weren't working at the beginning of the pandemic and then came to this show and he's hoping everybody's still happy and doesn't want to just go back to theater and they're still happy doing this show. Yeah, we love it. I mean, many of us got cast before the shutdown. I got cast in October of 2019. And so it felt um, like a, a really exciting next step in my career. That's great. Well, it's really great to speak with you again. I wish you plenty of luck and hope to talk about season three and beyond. Yes, thank you, Abe. Thanks for having me.